Okay, so uh, today I'm going to talk about managed entry agreement, uh, the concept and challenges. Uh, I have uh, four objectives. First, to present the concept of managed entry agreement, explore the difficult, the, the different types of uh, managed entry agreements with um, some of the real world examples from around the world. Uh, also, we will talk about some of the important key considerations uh, to be considered with managed entry agreements and the potential barriers to the implementation of uh, such kind of agreements. So, um, as you know, uh, healthcare systems around the world face uh, growing challenges in um, trying to provide a timely access to effective, uh, innovative interventions, which pose an important question, why healthcare is expensive and why healthcare budgets are increasing. Um, most importantly, the high cost of new innovations for common diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis, asthma, and diabetes. Also, the extremely high cost of innovations for rare diseases, uh, sometimes prescribing the drugs beyond approved indications, uh, limited resources, increasing demand due to, for example, aging population. And uh, Dr. Hala, sorry, I'll cut you off, but maybe you can open the camera? المشكلة إنه الإنترنت عندي very weak so لو فتحت الكاميرا للأسف حيضع في ال connection عندي. خلاص it's okay no problem. And also the last point is we 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 seen in the last couple of years accelerated approvals based on insufficient evidence for extremely expensive drugs. Uh, so, as you know, uh, new medications come with uh, a promise of uh, differential value, but they also come with price premium compared to other alternative options, and they come with substantial uncertainty related to uh, some health outcomes. So, um, um, we have now a flourishing uh, pipeline of biologics, orphan drugs, and several advanced therapy um, uh, or products. Uh, and other high priced medications that has the potential to have an enormous impact on uh, our budgets. Increasingly, um, regulators are seeking to expedite the marketing authorization for these uh, innovations. Physicians and patients are also uh, eager to use these uh, products. Uh, payers who are also um, um, eager to, to use these drugs or, or to ensure access to these drugs uh, however, they are also conscious of several difficulties, especially relating to the uncertainty at launch regarding the true value of these uh, new therapies that have immature evidence and um, also uncertainty around the appropriate use of uh, these therapies and the potential budget impact uh, to their healthcare system. Also, um, uh, from their part, drug companies also are keen to secure market access to uh, their new products as soon as possible. However, they don't want to uh, set the prices of their uh, products uh, too low because of uh, the impact on uh, the pricing in other uh, countries. So as I said, there are different types of uncertainty uh, coming with these uh, new products. Um, they are approved, launched, and reimbursed under conditions of uncertainty related to uh, the risk of long-term safety, risk of uh, long-term efficacy, the effect of uh, individual patients, the difference between uh, uh, the patients, the impact on the patients on uh, clinical trial and on real world, and of course, the budget impact. So gathering more of evidence to reduce this uncertainty is uh, definitely costly. So innovations are risky. And um, uh, as I said, uh, there are risk to payer who uh, bears the risk of making, um, uh, let's say a bad buy or bad deal when the incremental health benefit um, is not worth the additional cost coming with a drug. And collection of data, as I said, is, is risky, uh, is costly to uh, the payer. There is also risk to the manufacturer with, who operate with uh, a very high budget for R&D, risk to the patient, 
around the safety and clinical efficacy and risk to the provider over uh, the overall health uh, value of the product. So to um, uh, manage the pressure, uh, usually decision makers uh, come with different uh, uh, strategies to reduce the cost of um, uh, innovative drugs, including the pre-use authorization and uh, prescribing limits. Um, in some countries, increasing the uh, co-payment by patients, um, quantity limits, uh, prescriber restrictions, and most importantly, managed entry agreements, which we will be talking about uh, in detail. So starting with the definition of managed entry agreements, uh, they are defined as uh, simply an agreement between the manufacturer and uh, healthcare payers that allow for coverage of new medicines while managing uncertainty around the financial and the uh, health outcomes of the drug. So why do we need managed entry agreement? Because payers want to reduce the uncertainty around the clinical and financial impact. Pharma want to demonstrate the value of their new product the patient want to get um, earlier access to the new item, and the providers want to move towards uh, value-based purchasing. Uh, these uh, terminologies use, usually are used interchangeably to uh, describe managed entry agreement. However, there are different types of managed entry agreement, and we will be talking about uh, um, uh, each one of these with uh, example. So what is the history of managed entry agreement? Mainly, uh, most of the managed entry agreements uh, started in Europe, uh, let's say after uh, uh, 2002. However, the history of managed entry agreement uh, is very old. As you can see, these ads um, probably from the 40s or 50s, advertising the new products, for example, for headache uh, or even anxiety, where, where they guarantee um, uh, that the patient will have uh, his money back if the drug uh, did not work. So um, important um, uh, points to be considered uh, if we want to conduct risk sharing agreement or managed entry agreement. First of all, there must be a paradigm for data collection that is agreed between the manufacturer and the payer. And the data collection is usually uh, initiated at the time period following the regulatory approval. And it should be also linked to the post uh, launch coverage decisions. Uh, there should be also um, a reimbursement price that is linked to the outcome uh, collected uh, or of the paradigm of uh, data collection. This data collection should be uh, uh, mainly or most importantly intended to address uncertainty around the efficacy and safety uh, uh, in the tested population. Uh, these are the uh, different types of managed entry agreement. Uh, they are either financial, which is the most common uh, type, and uh, performance-based. Uh, financial can be um, simply confidential discount between the payer and the uh, uh, the company, or it can be um, an expenditure cap either at patient level or population level. It can also involve free initial treatment or a volume agreement. Uh, Performance-based uh, agreements um, can also be at patient level, for example, coverage with evidence development, pay payment per result, conditional treatment continuation, or it can be done at uh, population level as well, uh, such as coverage with evidence development or uh, payment by result. Uh, so why we, we like financial agreements? Because they are simple, uh, usually less administratively uh, heavy alternative to a performance-based agreement. Uh, however, still they help to contain cost and to improve cost effectiveness. Um, an important uh, uh, point here is uh, to, uh, to make sure that uh, prices are confidential because this is an important point and this is the uh, what makes these agreements attractive to uh, companies. Uh, so this is the most uh, important or the most common um, type of uh, financial agreements. 
which involve unconditional reduction of the list price uh, that is agreed between the manufacturer and the payer. Uh, it takes the form of an uh, upfront discount or ex post uh, rebate refunded by the firm. Um, for example, the agreement of Limvatinib for renal cell carcinoma in UK in 2018. Uh, this is involved only discount at the point of uh, purchase, uh, but uh, it must be, uh, of course, confidential. Uh, the second type is the patient level treatment or expenditure cap, and this is this type of agreement involve a um, uh, expenditure ceiling that is agreed between the two uh, uh, parties, uh, where the uh, company provides the product that exceeds this cap as free of charge, and this can be done either at patient level or also at uh, population level. Um, um, a very famous uh, example here is the uh, linalidomide uh, agreement in the UK, uh, where the company is uh, paid for the treatment up to 26 monthly cycle, and then they provide um, uh, the product free of charge for any patient who receive it uh, beyond the 26 cycles. At patient level also, uh, um, uh, the agreement can involve also uh, providing the initial treatment uh, free of charge. Uh, for example, citrulizumab um, um, for treating of uh, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, also in the UK. Uh, another local example is uh, uh, daratumumab for multiple myeloma, where the company offered to give uh, a free of charge the initial treatment to reduce the budget impact in the first year. Uh, expenditure cap uh, at population level where there is a ceiling uh, cap for a defined number of patients treated uh, with the disease uh, and any uh, number of patients beyond this uh, ceiling will be uh, free of charge. For example, the uh, agreement for direct acting antivirals for hepatitis C in Australia. Uh, this is also a very common type, which is used uh, around the world and also here in Saudi Arabia, uh, volume-based agreements. Uh, so basically, um, when you increase the volume that you get from the company, they give you more discount. So the other type of um, managed entity agreements is performance-based agreement. And this is more um, advanced, more complex, and uh, uh, requires... Um, a collection of data, it, it uh, focus on the patients that are likely to benefit the most from uh, the drug. Um, so the outcome is linked to uh, the coverage scheme uh, where you, we will be also only paying for uh, the responders. Uh, the first type of performance-based uh, um, uh, agreements is the patient level coverage with evidence development. Uh, so basically the treatment is uh, covered by the payer only for the patients who agree to be enrolled in the um, uh, clinical trials. For example, uh, the trial of clofarabine in Korea, where uh, patients um, enrolled in the clinical trial to receive the reimbursement of uh, uh, the medication. Um, Another type is the patient level payment by result or what is known as outcome-based agreement. Um, so the payment to the, firm, to the firm or the manufacturer for the treatment is uh, conditional on uh, reaching the specified outcome uh, agreed between the two uh, parties. So uh, once the patient receives the, um, uh, or reach this uh, uh, predefined outcome, the company will receive the payment. Sometimes it's done uh, upfront, sometimes uh, uh, ex post. Uh, for example, here, the alglucosidase -glu uh, alpha uh, for the treatment of pump disease in Estonia, which is still uh, ongoing. Another type is the patient level conditional treatment continuation, uh, where the coverage of the treatment is. Um, um, again, continued only for patients who uh, reach the uh, outcome. And the company will provide the product free of charge 
or discontinue, discounted if the patient do not uh, achieve uh, the result. And this type of agreement is uh, uh, more common even here in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, another type, which is the population level coverage with evidence development. Uh, and this usually uh, is used when there is a significant uh, uncertainty around the, uh, the result or there is uh, concern over the, uh, uh, the trial design. There is also another type, which is uh, payment, population level payment by result, which is similar to uh, the patient level payment by result, but at uh, population level. Uh, so now we will be talking about the international experience. Um, Italy is by far the most active uh, practitioner of uh, managed entry agreement, not only in Europe, but in, in the whole world. Uh, the country's managed entry uh, strategy is um, known by its um, extensive national system of uh, uh, online registries. Um, this uh, system had saved uh, the Italian system uh, um, around 530 million in 2017. Uh, in the UK, historically, uh, NICE always is focusing on um, the most simple type of managed entry agreement, which is uh, simple discounts. Uh, recently, they started doing uh, price volume agreements, uh, conditional reimbursement, uh, deferred payments, outcome-based agreement, uh, product service bundling, where they um, uh, bundle uh, uh, the services and innovations in portfolios, uh, uh, and also deferred payments. Uh, uh, Spain is also uh, considered um, latecomers just like UK to the managed entry agreement. And uh, most of the uh, activity to date has been on uh, at regional level because um, um, they have different um, types of agreement based on uh, the region. Uh, for example, Catalonia is um, um, the most active uh, um, region and managed entry agreement in Spain. And most of the deals are uh, risk sharing agreements in Spain and uh, sometimes expenditure ceilings also uh, is uh, used. Uh, France uh, uh, usually make use of price volume agreements. Um, um, they also um, uh, focus on uh, orphan drugs, uh, quantity limitations, uh, either at patient level or even uh, population level. Um, the savings in 2017 due to managed entry agreement uh, exceeded 1.3 1, 1 uh, billion, uh, which is uh, considered an increase of 200% in uh, five years. Uh, Canada and the US are not uh, yet active in managed entry agreement. Uh, for example, in the US, um, uh, up to 2018, there was only 43 um, published managed entry agreements. Uh, there might be some of the confidential agreements that uh, were not published. However, due to the um, uh, changes in, in um, the economic environment in general, um, um, it might um, increase the interest among payers and manufacturers toward uh, managed entry agreements. In, um, in, in Saudi Arabia, uh, there is interest, uh, recent interest in managed entry agreements. Um, the numbers are still small. Uh, however, um, uh, with improved, improved data systems, uh, the new registries, uh, the um, establishment of the HTA um, uh, initiative and the recent efforts by uh, MOH um, to conduct value-based agreements with companies. Uh, I believe in the coming uh, five years, we will be seeing more advanced types of managed entry agreement. Um, here I um, presented some of the uh, examples uh, of outcome-based agreements in uh, 
uh, done by MOH, for example, the uh, outcome-based agreement for drugs in multiple sclerosis and spinal muscular atrophy. Also, Bryce uh, volume agreement uh, for familial hypercholesteremia uh, drugs, uh, uh, BCSK9 inhibitors. So if you want to conduct uh, managed entry agreement, uh, there are uh, key questions that uh, must be uh, uh, addressed. First of all, you need to make sure that uh, the outcomes are measurable. Uh, you need also to agree on how uh, um, or who will fund the research and how this research will impact the price. Uh, sometimes uh, we receive agreement for, from uh, a company uh, if they find that the access to um, the formulary is uh, difficult or if the drug is rejected and uh, few dig deep down on the agreement, you will find that this will not affect the price in any way. Uh, so uh, it's, it's uh, kind of tricky. You need to look at the agreement. You need to compare the costs uh, before and after. Uh, it should be clear who will be collecting uh, and analyzing the data. Uh, most preferably, it should be a third party uh, to make sure that um, uh, uh, to uh, maintain the confidentiality of the patients. Uh, you need to set realistic uh, timelines. Um, uh, the overall cost should also be acceptable um, in terms of affordability. And you need to make sure that the further research is actually addressing the uncertainty around the uh, clinical and economic benefits of the drug. So what are the best drugs uh, that uh, can be uh, uh, a candidate for uh, managed entry agreement. First of all, definitely high cost of drugs uh, with um, um, most likely if there is uh, uh, uncertainty around uh, the efficacy, the safety or other uh, uh, clinical trial design. Um, it should be also for drugs that are used for limited number of patients because if it is a fast moving item or uh, uh, an item used for common uh, disease, it will be so difficult and costly to collect data. Um, you need to make sure that you don't already have an alternative in your uh, uh, formulary that is more cost effective than this drug. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't make sense to invest all uh, the effort and time and money in this agreement. Uh, you need to make sure that the outcomes are measurable. Uh, and you need to make sure that patients are actually adhered to uh, the treatment. So uh, the last uh, part of this presentation is to uh, elaborate more on the different barriers uh, uh, with regard to the use of managed entry agreement. First of all, as I said, it's... Um, extremely resource intensive and uh, um, it has uh, significant uh, additional effort uh, required to be uh, executed. Um, sometimes uh, you, may, you need to make sure that the, uh, the rebates that you will be getting from uh, the company uh, actually offset the cost of establishing the agreement itself. Uh, there is also um, uh, an issue or challenge of the metric selection of uh, the agreement. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, you are uh, identifying and defining a meaningful outcome that is also relevant to uh, reward uh, outcomes. Uh, you need to make sure that you already have um, um, an adequate data instructions. Uh, infrastructure, which is uh, honestly is not uh, the case in uh, locally here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, there is sometimes um, um, uh, difficulty on agreeing on uh, different uh, terms of the agreement with regard to the outcome, uh, the patient characteristics, and the collection, uh, data collection uh, method. Um, there is also um, um, in some disease areas, there is a risk for potential disinvestment. For example, those where um, very limited population is likely to be identified in 
the context of uh, managed entry agreement, which can be translated into uh, a low volume used for uh, the product. Oh, sorry, there is duplication in the slide. Um, uh, there is also a risk of, um, for example, if the, um, such as the case now in MOH, uh, we all know that they are very active uh, in uh, making uh, outcome-based agreements uh, to improve the, um, uh, the overall assessment of value. However, this may make uh, the companies come with higher price because they are expecting uh, several or, or um, uh, further negotiation and uh, managed entry agreements. Uh, one um, um, also barrier uh, um, from um, um, our experience in National Guard is that once you agree with the company on an agreement and you list the drug based on this agreement, it is so difficult to delist the drug uh, later if the managed entry agreement is uh, uh, established already. Uh, another um, uh, ba barrier that is relevant to our system is that here in the kingdom, we have a fragmented uh, healthcare system uh, and patients usually switch among um, uh, sectors to get the treatment, which leads sometimes in um, 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 for example, maybe duplication or a patient is taking the drug in MOH uh, while he's eligible for uh, another agreement in, for example, National Guard. Uh, also, as I said, there is issue of adherence. So um, there is lack of control over how the product will be used. Uh, and this is mainly based on the Italian uh, experience in many uh, agreements, um, uh, it was so difficult to track patients. Some of those patients uh, did not reach the endpoint, and the manufacturer is claiming that um, the um, failure is due to uh, non-compliance to the medication. Um, um, there is also risk uh, related to uh, uh, the manufacturer, which is in assessing the extent of the risk uh, upfront. Uh, a very important paper that uh, have, um, um, uh, it was published in 2013 regarding the uh, good practice for performance-based or risk-sharing agreement. It uh, basically drafted recommendations for the development and application of uh, the methods to be used when considering um, managed entry agreements. Uh, it is a very nice uh, paper. It uh, highlights all the important um, uh, key considerations of uh, managed entry agreements. Uh, with that, I finish my presentation. Thank you very much.